What an amazing week in the AI space, specifically related to large language models. Now, earlier in the week, we had the release of Bomba 3, which is the best open source large language model that has ever been crafted. And now we have the release of Phi 3, and this is by the Microsoft AI team. This is the third iteration of the Phi family, and it's a set of new small models that use the same training techniques as Phi 2. And this is to basically produce a tiny, a high performance model. Now, with the release of Phi 3, they also released four models under that umbrella. This is where we can take a look at this graph, which is showcasing the benchmark and the validation of all of these four models. Now, first suit, we have Phi 3 Mini. This is a model that has a 4K context window. And then we have a Phi 3 Mini model with a 128K context window, which is insane to have a context length for a model that is sized at 3.8K parameters. Then we have the Phi Small, which is a preview model at the moment. And it's something that has basically outsurpassed Mistral as well as Llama 3 and Gamma 7 Golem for him. Model. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Let me take a look at 5.3. This is a 3.8 point parameter large Spanish bottle, which is trained on 3.3 trillion tokens. Now, despite its compact size, something that is quite comparable to larger models such as Mixture AX70 and even GV2 2.5, where it actually achieved a score of 69% on M value and an 8.38 score on MT Bench. <laughs> now, the cool thing is, is that you can actually access the Phi 3 model on any sort of phone, meaning that you can test it on something like iPhone 14, which is something that you can see on the screen right now. It demonstrates its efficiency even on mobile devices. This is with the 4-bit Quantize 5.3 Mini, where it is running natively on an iPhone with an A16 Bionic chip, which is generating over 12 tokens per second. Hell. Let's take a look at the technical specifications of all four of these models, starting off with the 5.3 Mini model. This is based off of the transformer decoder architecture, and this is something that comes with the default context length of 4,000, but they also introduced a longer context version, which is the 5.3 Mini, 128k model. It extends the content fund to 128k, and this is using the long rope approach, and it shares the same Spock structure as Llama 2, which utilizes the same tokenizer. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see the 5.3 small model, which is a 7 billion parameter model that they also released. It leverages the same store of tokenizer, and it comes with the default content slump as of 8k, I believe. And if we go down even more, then we'll see that they've also released a medium model. This is a 14 billion parameter model, maintains the same tokenizer as well as the same architecture as the 5 tier mini model, but it's actually trained on a slightly larger data set. Now, this is something that is going to be used for various other use cases, but we can see that with the smaller models that they've released, it's something that could be deployed on the phone, which is really amazing to see. Let's now take a look at the valuation of this model. And it's just great to see that we can see that something like the Phi 3 mini model, which is comprising of approximately 3.8 billion parameters, is able to even outperform something like Mixtral as well as Llama 3. Now, these are small models, which they are able to record such amazing results on various benchmarks, something like where it can perform quite low in common sense or even logical reasoning. These are the benchmarks that they'd use to basically do standardized tests or the language model, and they use the same models for evaluating all models so that tests can be basically compared fairly. And we can see that from all the scores, they basically do a relatively good job in comparison to some of these other models. In some cases, it even outperforms GDK 3.5 as well as Mixtral, and it's just remarkable to see. Now, before we move on to test this model, I want to showcase how you can install it or how you can actually access it. There's two methods. You can obviously use Harding Chat to get started and access all four of these models, or you can install it locally by simply copying the model card, open up LM Studio. If you do not have LM Studio, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. This is a great way for you to install any sort of open source model locally. Now, once you have the LM Studio opened up, make sure you just paste in the model card into the search tab over here. Just simply click enter and you're going to be able to find that model that you want to install. Install it based off with the comp model that you want to work with. And then you can just install it by putting on this button over here. And once you're done, you can then select 
the, the conversation tab, and then you can load up the model that you just you're saying installed, and then you can start chatting with it within LM Studio's interface. Now, before I move on to any sort of testing, you guys need to realize that this model is not known for coding or doing complex reasoning. This is a model that is it's really going to be used for general inquiries where it can solve any sort of question answer, generic use cases, as it's profound mostly for knowledge based tasks, not for like complex coding. So if you ask it to generate code for something like a game, like a snakes and ladder game, or any sort of complex Python script, you're not going to be able to get the best generation as it's going to be incorrect and it won't be able to generate the full context of that code. But whereas if you are to answer some generic questions, it'll be able to do so. So the main focus of this model where it could be used is where you can deploy it as a question answering bot, or you can have it used where it's a coupled work, something like a rag algorithm, where you're going to be able to get the best use case of this model. Let's first start off by taking a look at the example prompts. This is something that is really good at testing generic use case of model where we're gonna basically have it right in the email from a bullet list. And we can see over here that this is the example as a restaurant owner, write a professional email to the supplier to get these products every week. You have fine, you have eggs and bread. And we can see over here that it does a grid job in a couple seconds of generating this response. Now, I am pretty sure, as I said before, it's not gonna be able to generate a snake game. If you even ask it to do this, it won't even be functional. And I guarantee you that if you are to copy and paste this into your VS code, you're not going to be able to get any sort of functional in out of this. And I will basically test it out after it has fully generated. I'm going to paste this code into VS code and I'm going to showcase that it is not going to work with such a model like this. I just for the heck of it, I'm going to test it out by simply just click down the play button after I saved it and let's see if it works. Olays. Okay. As I said, it's not going to work. And it can see over here, we can test it out again. And I get it's gonna load up, but within a couple of seconds, it's gonna prompt up a window and it's not gonna actually work. Now, I was just persistent and I wanted to showcase that you can actually use the code that was generated, but it'll just require you to edit a lot of things to make it functional. And based off of that code that it generated, I just super tweaked it and I made it work by just tweaking certain lines of code, make it functional to create this make game. And we can see over here that I was able to do this with Pygame, but it just took me a little bit longer to do so, where it took me around 10 minutes to actually generate the code. After it, it had generated the initial code for this game, added the three certain components to make it functional. And in this case, I'm just trying to prove that something like this is not going to be, like this model is not going to be able to generate code for a complex solutions like this. Or you can use that time somewhere else or with another language model like ChatGPT or even Mama 3 to get the output that you would want for something like this, where you would want it to generate something for a complex inquiry. Now, that's what I, I had stated before that this is a model that's going to be used for general inquiries or having it coupled with other algorithms to enhance its abilities. This is not something that's going to be used for a complex uh, code generation or anything of that sort. And that's something that I wanted to really specify. Now, I'm going to be testing the model to see how good it is at complex problem solving. This is where I got a base prompt that I found online, which will assess the language model's performance in complex problem solving. Just to give you more context of this prompt, it is a prompt which is assessing how well the large language model is able to solve various components of a problem. It is it's a real prompt which is asking you to be a city finder and you want to strategically solve problems such as traffic delays, pollution, as well as other components. And it, the answer that I got afterwards through a paragraph was quite detailed and it did actually a great job in developing this detailed strategy that incorporated this innovative solution. They it basically recommended a smart traffic management system. They also implemented a transportation system. And it also focused on where they should basically spend their money for certain expenditures. And it did a great job in terms of developing this plan. At first, it only jotted down certain points, which I should have specified beforehand, but we can see with the paragraph, it did a great job in developing this plan and helping the city out by being this, huh? And that's about it for today's video on 5.3. I hope you got some sort of value out of it. This is definitely an amazing 
push forward in the AI space with a small new model that will be really beneficial for a lot of us. I'll reference all the links in the description below so that you can access it right away. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on notification, bell like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly.